Russell Westbrook, absolutely. One thousand percent, whatever you need, Russell Westbrook. I think number one, he's going to give you a chance to win, which is going to hold the rest of your team accountable. He's not afraid to yell at guys or to say, you know what, F you, I'm going to do it myself, right? Like get his ass on the bench. Give me somebody who's going to help me do what I need to do for us to win. Um, I think he embodies New York style. It's like, if you ain't with me, fuck you type attitude, which I think is like everything that he's being a dog. Nick, he's definitely a dog. He's, a, sure. he's super dog. Yeah. So he's going to go 110%, but he's also going to give you quality minutes, right? It's not like this fluffy, look at my box score. He's going to give you a chance to win every single night. Now, to build the culture back of the Knicks, you need that person. You haven't had that person. You've had a lot of talent, but never since Melo was in his prime, I think it was like 13, 14, right? When mm -hmm, JR mm -hmm. was popping, Shump, have you guys had somebody that gave you a chance to win every single night where everybody was getting quality, learned minutes each minute of the game? You know, on the flip side, when we talk about player development, we look at a right. guy like an RJ Barrett who, right. you know, needs the ball, hasn't been shooting the ball well, or didn't have a good rookie year in terms of shooting the ball. You have Westbrook, who's one of, you know, the highest usage players in the league right. how, do you, how do you think that squares up well i think the thing is is maybe you gave rj barrett too much on his plate right like make it simple for him and this i'm i'm old school in this thinking rj barrett is a very talented player i think he's gonna be very good but you can't give him the whole plate of food you're not gonna give him the big piece of chicken what has he earned what has he earned so all of a sudden you're expecting him to give you 20 a night it doesn't work that way there's maybe a handful of guys that I could think that have taken that responsibility and and just skyrocket with it, right? And even in their first year, they were surrounded by culture and vets and stability and other talented guys that fit with them. RJ, if you you know, obviously you watch the Knicks and I watch him a lot. He was like, "Damn, I'm not going to get the ball. I got to shoot six times right. in a row, regardless of the score." How did, that doesn't make you a better player. And I think he's a winner. I think he has winning traits, right? Steve Nash is my one of my good friends. He talks so highly of him, so I'm going on that. And what I'm seeing, when things go bad, he wants to have a piece of the pie of like, how can we get this going? But by the end of the year, when things started getting bad, I saw him getting into bad habits. Now, Thibodeau is gonna have them prepared. He's gonna have them well-practiced and they're not going to worry about being cool because sometimes and, and it happened to us i think with the knicks was new york is new york right so so i don't care what anybody says if you never play for the knicks it's hard to understand when you play for the knicks every door is open right every door in the city is open you are like extremely well respected you're part of the the, the root of new yeah, york yep the fabric the root whatever it is when you win, right? We were horrible teams. We won three or four in a row. You couldn't tell me nothing. You would have thought I won a championship. <laughs> but when we lost, everybody was so addicted to that feeling. They wanted to do their individual best more than what was best for the team, right? And I thought a team that should have stayed together if possible was Jeremy Lin, Wilson Chandler, Gallinari, Amari, um, even, you know, Chubby Ray Felton, right? But, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but they were a team and they, they took those bright lights mm -hmm. and they said, hey, we need to work together. Um, and I'm forgetting somebody else, the kid from Stanford. You know, Landry um, Fields. Landry Fields. Yeah. But like, that is what New York needs now in this generation is like, I can be that guy. I don't need to, you get one or two stars. They don't even have to be superstars rebuild your culture rebuild the fabric of the knicks we need that. right through through saying you know what you're better than this guy but this guy is better for us right he fits us mm -hmm. for instance and i'll use this and everyone will mm -hmm. san antonio miami boston they put players in their system that fit that system in the fabric of the city now if you don't fit they're like hey sorry it didn't work out boom bada bing bada boom gotta go mm -hmm. Newton, the Knicks have to have that power again to be the powerhouse because I say this all the time, the Knicks being great 
changes the NBA. Oh, for sure. It yeah. changes, right? Brooklyn can be great and they will be great. Mm. It's not, it's, it's different not on the net. It's yeah. not the same. Yeah. It's absolutely not. And I don't care what anybody young head says, it's not the same. I played for it, I've seen it. The garden is the garden always. 